Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to your mini lesson for chapters 15, 16, and 17. So good readers identify the point of view that the author is writing in and how it affects the perspective of how the story is told. So there's a two, this is a two-parter. First part of this mini lesson is identifying the point of view the author is writing in. That means who is speaking, who is telling this story. And then part two is digging even deeper into that and thinking to yourself, how does that person telling the story affect how the story is told? If it sounds a bit confusing to you, don't worry, because we're going to get more into it. So I just created a little cartoon here, but Miss Madison, what is point of view? Well, Sally Sue, wonderful question. The point of view refers to the person who is telling the story. So remember when you wrote a personal narrative in September? Your personal narrative was from your point of view. If I were to write a journal entry about my experience on, I don't know, at a Halloween parade, I would be writing about my experience from my point of view, and that would be mine, my point of view. If you were to write um, a journal entry about your day, your first day of school, that would be your point of view. It'd be you telling the story, you are the narrator. Okay. So good readers notice how the narrator's point of view affects how the story is told. So I want you to think for a second and imagine that you came to me in class and you were like, Miss Madison, you know, this happened at recess and you told me the whole story about what happened from your point of view. And then imagine Jimmy John two minutes later says, Miss Madison, this is Visconti. This is what happened at recess. And they tell us a whole new story. Maybe it's true to them, but it's how they experience the story. They included their emotions, whereas you included your emotions. You know, you included your background knowledge of what you think is appropriate and they included theirs. Who is telling a story and who is speaking changes completely how the story is told. So the point of view determines what the reader knows about the events or plots. So think about Crash, our novel. The story is told from Crash's point of view. So we only know what Crash wants us to know. We know his emotions and his opinions. But we don't know anything from Penn's point of view, right? And the point of view is the lens that the reader sees the story through. So we are seeing the story literally through Crash's eyes. So it would be a different story if the story were coming from Penn's eyes. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of practice here. I have two stories for you. One is from a daughter's point of view and one is from a mother's point of view. And you will see that depending on who is speaking, they could be talking about the same exact event, but they will see it very differently. And we as readers will begin to empathize with different people in each story. So let's see this. The first story is from the daughter's point of view. Mother gasped as she pulled open the front door and caught a glimpse of the disaster in my bedroom. I could tell she was not happy as she surveyed my clothes thrown all over the floor and books piled everywhere. I opened my mouth to explain the reason for the mess, but I had lost the locket that grandmother had given me, but mother held up her hand to stop me. I knew a lecture and a consequence was coming, so I quietly began to pick everything up. So in this story, from the daughter's point of view, I empathize with her. I feel badly that she lost a locket and she was looking everywhere, something very special from a grandmother. And I feel bad for her that, you know, it seems like she's getting scolded for really trying to find something. And it's not like she's being lazy and messy. And that's how we're feeling from the daughter's point of view. Now let's hear this same exact event, but from the mother's point of view. I opened my daughter's bedroom door to ask if she wanted to order pizza for dinner and stared in disbelief at the mess she had created. Didn't she understand how hard it was to keep the house clean? 
I notice all the clean laundry I had just folded and delivered to her room, thrown everywhere, and the books she had gotten for her birthday jumbled in piles on the floor. She opened her mouth to make excuses, but I stopped her before she could even talk. I sighed and headed for the door. I didn't even have the energy to lecture her one more time. So now that I'm reading the mother's point of view, I'm just going to pretend I didn't read the daughter's. I'm thinking that her daughter seems a little bit disrespectful. Her mom does all of this work to fold her laundry, to deliver it, to buy her books for her birthday. And it seems like the daughter is just disrespecting that. So do you see how two different stories about the same exact event, just told by different people, completely changes the way that a story is told? And that's exactly what we're going to be working on today. So what I want you to think about is think back to, I think it was chapter two or three, when Crash went over to Penn's house for dinner. And we heard Crash's opinions. He was very abrupt. He was very, I would even say rude. And I remember thinking, I really wonder how Penn's feeling right now because we didn't, we don't get a whole lot of what's going on inside Penn's head because he's not our narrator. It's not from his point of view. So what I was wondering to myself is what, how would that scene or how would that chapter have been different if it were from Penn's point of view? Because we as readers think that Penn doesn't realize that Crash is teasing him and Penn doesn't realize what's going on, but do we really know that if we don't know his, um, if we don't hear this story from his point of view? I don't think that we can say we don't know that because he might just be somebody who keeps things to himself. He doesn't always act on his emotions. Um, so something else I was also thinking is Mrs. Visconti in the previous lesson mentioned that Penn was going out for the cheerleading team. And when you guys were questioning, I noticed that a lot of you guys were asking, why did Penn go out for the cheerleading team? Like, what was his reason? And I think that we would have had that answer if this story were from Penn's point of view. So we don't know a lot about Penn and what's going on inside of his head because this story isn't told from his perspective. So what I really would like for you to do is jot down two events from this book so far that you think would have been different from a different character's point of view. I told you too, I think that um, when Crash went to Penn's house for dinner, I think that event would be very different from Penn's point of view and we would have got a better idea of Penn's feelings. And I also think we would have a better understanding of Penn and his cheerleading, going out for the cheerleading team that if it was also from Penn's point of view. So that's what I want you to do, jot two things down. And as you're reading today's chapter, really focus on imagining these chapters from a different character's point of view, okay? So you're gonna click to listen to chapter 15, 16, 17, and then check back in for mini lesson part two.